Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. On this episode of the Soybean School, we're pleased to be joined once again by Laura Schmidt, Production Advisor with Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Growers covering the western side of Manitoba. We're at uh, Crop Diagnostics School at Carmen, Manitoba. And Laura, when it comes to Phytophthora, uh, root rot disease in soybeans that's quite common in, in this part of the world, what are we seeing now when it comes to research and surveillance around this disease? Sure. So there's been some pretty recent changes to some of a, how we monitor for this disease, how farmers can find out what pathotypes of Phytophthora exist in their field, and even just in terms of what we have for management strategies. So each year, uh, we survey about 70 soybean fields annually as part of our soybean disease survey. Uh, this is in collaboration between Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Growers, Manitoba Agriculture, and also Ag Canada, uh, specifically out of Brandon, where they're doing a lot of the root work. So Phytophthora, of course. So new last year for the phytophthora part of the root rot survey we started collecting soils from these fields we were surveying and actually sending that off and finding out the pathotypes of phytophthora that are present in the soil now this is a key piece of phytophthora management in terms of knowing what pathotypes are in your soil so you can actually pair that with an effective RPS gene for that major gene resistance, which is complete protection against Phytophthora throughout the growing season. So this is really valuable information to have gotten to farmers this year. Uh, we also learned quite a bit of it in terms of where we're at with Phytophthora in the province. So last year was a drier year. Above ground, we didn't really see symptoms of Phytophthora that much, but from the soil testing, we found out that you know 84% of those soils did come back with some potential for Phytophthora infection there. The other piece of the puzzle, water uh, for Phytophthora infection, that's what was missing so we didn't see a lot of actual infections but the potential is in our soil for those infections. Uh, and I think this year with the moisture we've had that's going to be kind of top of mind. Uh, so that surveillance advancement is really quite key and, and even that ability to find out what pathotypes are in your soil. And then there's a second component of resistance. It's called partial resistance or field tolerance. Uh, so that major gene resistance, that's complete throughout the growing season. Uh, that plant will always be resistant to specific pathotypes. Uh, but again, you need to know what pathotypes are in the soil to actually use that effectively. And in some of those fields uh, that have been either soybeans for a long time or uh, tight soybean rotations, We've got very few major genes that still will offer protection against Phytophthora there, so we have our other form of resistance called partial resistance or field tolerance that we can then rely on. And that's another interesting space we're, ex we're exploring more. Uh, so in one way, we're testing different varieties uh, for their partial resistance, just to get a bit of an independent measure uh, that farmers might be able to use. Um, seed companies are reporting some of those measures. Um, for their, their respective varieties, but they're all using different scales, so it's hard to compare between varieties, or between seed companies, I should say. And so that's kind of what we're exploring down that avenue. But also um, Dr. Youngming Kim, who's our Egg Canada researcher out of Brandon that's doing a lot of this root disease research, uh, he's exploring with his colleagues at Morden and also at Harrow more about actually what can we expect from this partial resistance in the field and, and comparing some of this uh, kind of greenhouse work that they're doing for the partial resistance to what can we actually see in the field. And I think that's really exciting. So ultimately it comes back to that concept of matching what you have protection for with the the threat or the pest that's in the field and that's where some of the research that was done last year it it showed that that RPS 1C and 1K I think are the most common but also the most easily overcome in our soybean variety. Yeah, so when we look at our, our varieties that we're testing in in our you know, annual variety trials, and we look at the actual complement of RPS genes they have. Most commonly, the soybean varieties we grow in Manitoba have RPS 1C or 1K, and we find that corresponding in the pathotypes that we actually see in the field where they are most commonly able to overcome RPS 1C or 1K. We do have other RPS genes available, so uh, RPS 1A was kind of considered long ago defeated, uh, but we do have RPS 3A and RPS 6, where they're not as common in our varieties, but they do offer, or have the potential to offer a lot more protection against the pathotypes that are actually in our soils. So taking a look and uh, at your soybean varieties, if you've had Phytophthora in your field or you're seeing that quite commonly this year, Take a look at that major gene resistance. Maybe you want to be swapping out some of those genes um, or participating in the soybean disease survey and getting some of that soil tested uh, through that as well okay. as an option. And stay tuned for more info, I guess, on the, the field tolerance on, the, on that, uh, the other 
as that partial resistance aspect of of the soybeans that we grow yeah so uh that's kind of an exciting landscape where we're headed with that uh, we do need more years of data before it's ready for prime time and i think we all can agree that we we'd like to be confident in what we're, we're recommending out there to farmers too and then I guess just one last uh, thing to mention that they are also exploring is tailgate tests. So something that you could do rapidly in the field to assess is this phytophthora or not and just get that answer a little bit quicker. Um, so those are those are kind of an, another exciting little research avenue that's occurring too. All right. Well, cool to see some progress on figuring out this disease and how we can manage for it. Yeah, and we'll see what we can see as we move into mid-July and into August. Will we see some of this with the moisture we've had? And, and it might be front of mind if if we do yeah, so certainly could be timely thank you laura thank you so much thanks for having me